What's going on everyone? This is Luke from South Beach Sports and welcome back to another video. Uh, welcome back to another Heat post game show. We got the bucket hat on so you guys know what that means. The Heat took the dub. Your Miami Heat defeat the New Orleans Pelicans 113-98. to Before I get into the rest of the show, uh, like I always say, make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on that post notification bell so you do not miss a single video. Also, go ahead and comment down your thoughts on the Heat's 15-point victory and Jimmy Butler's monster performance. Let's start off with the box score, and let's start off with Jimmy Butler because he was phenomenal throughout this whole entire game. He finished the, uh, the game with 31 points on 10 for 18 shooting. He made a three-pointer. He was one for two from three. Uh, he also had 10 rebounds and 10 assists. So you guys know what that means. A triple-double for him. He was called to do a lot for the Heat tonight. There was no Bam, no Kyle Lowry. So Jimmy had the role of not only uh, the primary scorer, but he also had to been uh, he also had to uh, have been the primary ball handler and the primary playmaker, and he was just that. He played a very very good game uh, defense as well. Uh, just overall one of the best performances for Jimmy Butler this season. Uh, he's playing phenomenal this season. Uh, Tyler Hero box score wise when you're looking when you're looking at his performance by the end of the game it was pretty solid he finished the game with 19 points three three rebounds and five assists but that first half for him was really really rough it was probably his worst half of the season he only finished the half the first half with two points uh and his ball handling was an issue was an issue he got ripped three times uh, two of those times were on consecutive plays. Uh, Pelicans rookie Herb Jones ripped him on consecutive plays. Uh, and it just wasn't a good first half for him, but good on Hero for just coming back and uh, playing well in the second half. He had 17 points in that second half. He had some nice passes. Uh, directly after this video, I'm going to record another video about Tyler Hero and get, get into some of his uh, film from this season and talk a little bit about why he's been so phenomenal this season and why he's pretty much been an all-star candidate and that video will probably out by, be out by Friday so just be on the lookout for that uh, PJ Tucker he finished the game with 13 points on a very efficient six for seven shooting he had four rebounds and two assists uh, saw something on Twitter um, I think it was by uh, some some of you guys on he Twitter probably know this is uh, Kenny Tex uh, his name is Silas B Silas uh, he said that P.J. Tucker has not missed a floater since 1989, and there's some truth to that because he does not miss floaters. He doesn't miss them. Um, he, like I said, he finished the game six for seven shooting, uh, was hitting those show, those off those floaters off short rolls and such. Um, also, a little sidetrack. I'm sorry if there's like some weird uh, noise with the mics with the mic every now and then. I'm looking to upgrade this microphone. It's not the best, so I'm looking for an upgrade in that department. But anyways, back to P.J. Tucker. I really like how the Heat have used him in a very versatile and diverse way uh, offensively. He's not just a, um, a corner, uh, corner spot-up guy. Uh, in the Heat's offense, he's not just someone who just sits there in the dunker spot or in the corners. He'd actually use, um, use Tucker a lot uh, on short rolls and dribble handoffs, and he's really making a living. From, not, well, not making a living. He's really carving out a role for himself on these short, on these short rolls with the little five to ten foot floater shots. Uh, off the backboard, just really fundamental stuff, and Tucker's really coming along very nicely in that Heat offense. Dwayne Dedman got the start at center uh, due to Bam Adebayo's absence. Uh, I, I wouldn't worry too much about Bam missing these games because of his knee injury. Uh, the way Eric Spolster was talking about it pregame, uh, it seems like this injury was more preventative and more of a rest type thing for Bam, uh, and I think Eric Spolster just kind of assumed that the unit that the Heat put together tonight would be able to beat a very bad Pelicans team and that's exactly what happened. Uh, Dedman finished the game with only two points. Uh, he had eight rebounds however, uh, four of them uh, offensive rebounds so Dedman did his job. Uh, he's not flashy, he's not going to score 20 points but he does the dirty work, he does his job, he's the mechanic for a reason. Shout out Miami Heat beat. Uh, Duncan Robinson, a quiet day for him, six points, two for six from the three point line, two assists. Uh, nothing really noticeable from him. He wasn't noticeably good, but at the same time, he wasn't noticeably bad. Uh, only two fouls from him. I guess you could say that. Uh, fouls have been an issue for, for Duncan Robinson, but he was not in foul trouble today, and he played pretty good defense, so I will give him that. Uh, let's talk about the bench unit, because the bench was very, very impressive in that second half. 
Uh, Max Struess and Gabe Vincent, good for them. They caught fire in that second half from three. Max Struess finished the game with 15 points, 10, uh, not 10, five for seven from the field, uh, three rebounds and assists, uh, four for six from the three-point line. Very good shooting night from Max Struess. And Gabe Vincent, who has had his fair share of struggles from the three-point line, not only this season, but during his Heat career. Uh, and these struggles have been weird because mechanically, Stru um, Vincent is a very mechanically sound shooter. He fundamentally flick the wrist, uh, very smooth jump shot. And I've seen it before on Heat Twitter. He has some of the prettiest misses uh, that we've ever seen. But he was able to get that three-point shot to fall tonight. Vincent uh, ended the game with a, um, I don't want to say career high. Uh, no, definitely not a career high. He had multiple 20-point performances last year. Uh, with a uh, season high, 13 points uh, off three for six shooting from the three-point line. So good outing from him. Uh, Caleb Martin finished the game with 12 points. Uh, he also had six rebounds, three assists. I'm going to get a little, a little bit more into Caleb Martin right now. Uh, the addition of Martin as a two-way player for the Heat was masterful. Martin is a terrific player off the bench. He is a terrific player in trans transition. I mentioned on Twitter that he gets a lot of easy baskets just from simply running the floor. He's a very athletic player. Uh, crafty layup package as well. He's good at finishing around the rim. He has nice touch. Um, his, his quick, uh, he's a very quick first step. His burst is pretty impressive off the dribble. He's not a super flashy player, but he's able to get to his spots, and those spots are at the basket. A good finisher, good versatile defender. Uh, he's not an excellent shooter, but he's shown that he's comfortable shooting the three. Uh, he made a three-pointer tonight. And overall, it was just a very good addition by the, uh, the Heat's front office in that offseason. I think Martin will definitely play key minutes for the Heat uh, as we progress through the season. Uh, Casey Akpala uh, had 11 minutes tonight. He was the first player off the Heat's bench because of P.J. Tucker's foul problems. Uh, and just... The thing with Casey Akpala is, is like, he just doesn't look comfortable with the ball in his hands. It, like, it's like he... he his decision making is just like sped up and I mean the Heat invested a pretty good amount uh, in Casey Ogbala they gave up I think three first round picks to get him in the 2019 draft might have been two uh, someone correct me on that in the comments if I'm wrong but I think it was three second round picks to trade ahead trade up in the second round of the NBA draft and pick up Ogbala and, I mean, he has all the tools. He's a lengthy, super lengthy 6'8", uh, 6'9", six, six, player, uh, versatile defender, um, someone who you would think is a solid finisher. But he just looks uncomfortable through his first three seasons in the NBA. Uh, the shot's really never been able to fall. And, I mean, there were two examples tonight. Uh, he, like, he took a shot, I think, in the, the right wing, where he was left open and there's a reason why he was left open because he's not a good shooter and it was a shot that he should not have taken and then there was another example in the left wing where Akpala uh there was like a second and a half left in the shot clock Jimmy Butler uh was driving to his left uh he drove to the, to the nail and then kicked it out to Akpala and Casey literally had to shoot the ball because the shot clock would have run out if he did not uh, and it was a pretty open look but Akpala completely unaware of the shot clock or for whatever for whatever reason kicked it out to Duncan Robinson who was 35 feet away from the basket and it was a shot clock violation just bad basketball awareness from KZ and the development of him so far through his NBA career has been pretty disappointing to say the least uh Omar Year 7 played two minutes tonight um yeah the thing is, I know some Heat fans are going to be disappointed in year seven because they drew up these unrealistically high expectations for him based off what he was doing in the summer league against 6'5 and 6'6 six, six centers. Uh, year seven, is, I think, is going to be a fine center in the NBA. He's going to be fine. Uh, he has a lot of promising tools. He's a good rebounder, big body. Uh, he can put his hands up, solid rim protector, good shooter. Uh, he has a lot of translatable uh, traits that fares well for his uh, future in the NBA. But for right now, um, I don't see it. He's a, he has slow feet, and that will 
allow him or that, that will cause him to be to get played off the court a lot. And I would just damper your expectations for Omar at seven right now. I don't expect him to play any solid or any worthwhile rotation minutes for the Heat this season. Uh, Udonis Haslam, seven minutes off the bench, two points, three rebounds, one assist, one block, a very impressive block, I must say so myself, and a plus 12 plus minus. I have to give it up to you, uh, give a uh, round of applause for UD. He was really good, especially in the, um, in the second half. He got, he got in mid third quarter and he delivered. He absolutely delivered. He played good minutes off the bench. And uh, like these weren't charity minutes. These weren't minutes where, you know, you were just hoping to get by with UD. Like, no, he was doing his role and playing very good. Uh, I'm surprised that we've seen multiple appearances this season with Udonis Haslam playing rotational minutes. But, you know, the NBA is weird. And that's, and that's just what we've seen, man. Uh, let's get into the Pelicans a little bit. Um, uh, Nikeel Alexander Walker, uh, he finished the game with 24 points. He was the Hornets' leading scorer. He also had four rebounds and two assists. Brandon Ingram struggled for most of the, for the most of the first half. He picked it up a little bit in the second half. He finished the game with 19 points, five rebounds, and five assists. Uh, someone who's been a uh, kryptonite for the Heat the past few years, Jonas Valanciunas. He finished the game with only 13 points and eight rebounds. And the Pelicans are bad. Sorry if that was an abrupt transition there, but the Pelicans are really, really bad. They are a very, very bad team, especially offensively. Uh, Willie Green is a first-time head coach. I'm sure he'll be, able to, he'll be able to pick it up a little bit, and having no Zion um, doesn't help either. But the Pelicans, in my opinion, had the worst offseason in the NBA. Uh, I th- well, I mean, I th- the Jonas Valanciunas trade was okay, but I don't think it was really a uh, like a needle mover. I think that's the expression. It really wasn't that substantial of a of a move, in my opinion, uh, for how the rest of the Pelicans roster is built. And them giving up Lonzo Ball for nothing, especially when Lonzo had that chemistry with Zion Williamson, it was just awful. Especially considering how good Lonzo is playing for the Bulls, who are awesome in their own respect. And just acquiring Devontae Graham to replace Lonzo is just bad. Fonte Graham is a streaky, inconsistent scorer. Uh, he's a microwave scorer. He'll put up 25, 30 points one night, and then he'll put up five or eight or a, a underwhelming scoring output. Uh, the Pelicans had one of the worst off seasons in the NBA, and that's what's show. That's what's being shown uh, so far through the NBA season. They are two and fourteen, and I think every Heat fan had in the back of their minds watching the disastrous first half that Miami had. That if only Tyler Hero could pick it up a little bit, if only that, if only some of the other Heat players besides Jimmy Butler could pick it up a little bit, then they could come back and uh, overtake the lead that the Pelicans had. Because even though the Pelicans were leading, they had a 13-point lead at the, at the end of the first quarter. It wasn't. It wasn't impressive. Like, I, I was not impressed at all by what New Orleans was doing. They were just catching the Heat late, um, pretty late off rotations and making open threes. But once the Heat's defense settled down and once they once they were able to just crisp up and uh, ready up their rotations, it was a struggle for uh, for New Orleans. Uh, last thing I want to get into before I wrap it up is should be better an MVP candidate. I think that's a conversation that really needs to be had. Uh, this was the Jimmy Show tonight. Like I said, he finished in with 31 points, 10 rebounds, and 10 assists. And I think his name definitely has to be at least in there. Just throw it in. I'm not saying he should be the number one MVP candidate right now. Uh, that person should be Nikola Jokic. Uh, I know most Heat fans don't really like Nikola Jokic, especially right now. But you can't deny uh, he has been probably the best player in the NBA this season, especially defensively. I'm sidetracking right now getting into Nikola Jokic, but the narrative that Nikola Jokic is a bad defender is stupid. It's really stupid. Uh, just watch a Nuggets game. I'm sure most of you guys watch the Nuggets, he's Nuggets first heat game, but watch another Nuggets game and just watch Nikola Jokic and the impact that he has in the defense spin of the ball. And it's crazy. Especially in, in drop in drop coverages on defense, he's so smart. Uh, he knows uh, his hard hedges are efficient. Uh, Nikola Jokic is a big guy, but he's very agile. Uh, he's such a good rim protector, 
and he's overall just a very, very good defender, and the, adva- and the adva- advanced metrics really back that up. And on the offensive end, you guys know with Nikola Jokic, he is a terrific player, uh, arguably the best passer in the league to go along with an easy 25 points a night. He's just unbelievable, and he's probably my MVP favorite though so far. But let's get back to Jimmy Butler. Uh, Butler has been great this season. He is averaging, I think, 24 a game now. Uh, and pairing that up with what he's done in the playmaking department, uh, his rebounding, and his defense, which, again, is all NBA defensive team worthy, uh, you really have to consider, consider him in that discussion. Anyways, guys, uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, like I said, be on the lookout for Friday's video. Uh, I'll post it Friday at 5 p.m. I think that's when, when I plan on scheduling it. Uh, Tyler Hero Film Breakdown video. I'm super excited for that video to come out. It's going to be an absolute banger. So anyways, like always, uh, like I said earlier, make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on the post notification bell so you do not miss a single video. And comment down below your thoughts on the Heat's 113-98 victory over the New Orleans Pelicans. And have a great rest of your night. So peace. Catch you later. And go Heat.